Hello, I'm Anna Raimondi, coming to you from the Angel Cooperative in Ridgefield, Connecticut. Welcome to this episode of Talking to the Dead in Suburbia. Today, we have Sarasota, Florida artist Alexis Fraser, who is known in the art and design industry as Lipstick Lexi. Lexi has differentiated herself in the art and creative space with the use of lipstick as her primary medium. Well, that's different. Which in addition, adorns everything she creates with her signature kisses. Her unconventional approach has brought international attention to her brand, which promotes love, self-love, affection, self-expression, joy, and positivity. Lexi has profound has a profound journey as a creative entrepreneur and it wasn't until she found the power of herself through spirituality manifestation and self-love that her career really began to blossom i want to hear about that she is now sharing this wisdom with her new co-founded self-development business the metamorphosis retreat whose mission is to provide a safe space, enlightenment, and inspiration for those that seek to step into a better version of themselves. So hopefully I got that all right. Yes, you got it right. You nailed it. <laughs> I'm happy about that. Well, welcome. I'm so happy to have you here. Um, we've only known each other through Instagram. Yes. I mean, I feel like I've known you. I mean, just because I've, I actually discovered you, Anna. I'm so honored and excited to be here talking to you today. I actually discovered you because of your appearance on the Drew Barrymore show. And it was when we were in the pandemic and I was just like looking for, I don't know, uplifting content and Drew Barrymore is just like my spirit woman. I love that woman so much. And I came across her segment with you and it was so wonderfully timed because it was during this pandemic, I think is when I really kind of tapped into my spirituality on a whole new level. And you kind of opened up a whole new light of possibilities. And I was like, who is this woman? I need to know more about her. And so I got your book that I, I remember Googling you that night. And I'm like, I got your book and I learned everything about you. And I've just been following you so closely ever since. And like, thank you so much for everything you put out there. I just want to first and foremost say thank you. <laughs> Oh, well, that's so nice to hear. It's so nice <laughs> to hear that there's a positive impact, you know, yeah. because, you know, usually people, they talk to me and then they go on their merry way. So thank you for sharing that with me. Yeah. I'm, I'm so interested in, in your journey, like lipstick, like how did you find yourself as a lipstick artist? Oh gosh, it's, um, well, honestly, what it all kind of came down to was, the short end of the story is I wanted to differentiate myself, but the long end of the story is that, you know, I grew up very, very creative, um, always building, always imagining, always um, finding new ways to make things, build things, um, very imaginative with, imaginative with my younger siblings. And I always knew when I grew up, I wanted to do something creative. I wanted to be an artist. I didn't really know what that meant, what that would look like. But as I got older, I remember just the world telling me, counselors, teachers telling me, you know, if you're an artist, that's not really a safe idea. I think you should go with something more like, you know, graphic design or um, interior design or something where there's more of like, you can build a career around it. And you know, you're young and you're vulnerable. And so you listen to these elders. And um, so I veered away from the idea of ever being an artist for a living. And uh, we ended up well, what <laughs> I'm trying to think of like the way to like wrap this up or nutshell it the best for you. So what ended up happening was I went to school for interior design is what I ended up going to school for. And it turns out that it was a lot less design work, a lot more sales, and it just didn't kind of fit me. And then I ended up kind of, I fell out of school and I got back into school and I discovered, you know what, maybe I'll just be an art teacher because at least then I can be surrounded by art, I'm teaching art to kids. I like kids, you know, maybe I could do this route. So I ended up going back to school and uh, mind you, my school journey was a long one. I didn't actually graduate college. Uh, it was a nine year process because I was in school, out of school, really trying to find my passion and what I was supposed to do. And I kept falling out of love with school because I just didn't really know what I wanted to do. But I went back to school to become an art teacher 
And as soon as I finally graduated, my husband, who's Canadian, announces to me that he was offered a job in Toronto. And I was excited about that. I always wanted to move to the big city. However, this meant that I legally couldn't work. So I finally graduate and I've got this degree and I'm ready to have a classroom, but now we're moving and I can't legally work there. So we moved to Toronto and we end up moving into this adorable uh, brownstone apartment building. And there was this little bonus room at the front, just like full of light. I think it's supposed to be like a room that you grow plants in or something like that, one of these sunrooms. And I turned it into my little craft room or my creative room. And so because I legally couldn't work, it took me two years to get my permanent residency in Canada so I could legally work. But during those two years, I just started creating and I was making art. And I would post my creations onto Facebook at the time. And I remember people inquiring, hey, is that painting you just made for sale? Or if I give you a picture of my dog, could you create my dog? And then I'm thinking, wait a minute, people won't exchange their dollars for my creations. Isn't this what like an artist would do? And so I really started to believe that I could actually make a living from being an artist. Fast forward a few years, um, now I really realized, okay, I'm doing pretty well at my art, but I really wanna differentiate myself because I feel like the art world is so saturated. And so I started dabbling a lot of unconventional mediums and methods, and I came to the idea of lipstick to come back to your full circle to your question, um, because I was about to create a portrait of Marilyn Monroe, and I was really into pop art at the time. And I wanted to create Marilyn in a way that would correlate with Marilyn. And so the idea of creating her with lipstick and even putting my kiss, my uh, actual physical kisses in the piece of artwork, because it just seemed so Marilyn, felt very appropriate. So I did it, my husband filmed it and posted the process onto YouTube and it just got an incredible reaction. And so it's just blossomed since then. <laughs> I think that's a great story. I mean, you know, I feel yeah. like the universe kind of brought you to a place where you had to stop your life and say, okay, this is what I can do and should do. And I think it's wonderful, you know, and your art is absolutely beautiful. Not only um, the pieces that you make with lipstick, but your denim jackets are great. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I love them. Although they're all sold out on your, the website. No, I still have a few left. I still have, I think, four, four or five denim jackets left. So they, they, I hope they don't say they sold out on the website. We're going to have to fix that if that's the case. Yeah, no. <laughs> Where can people go to, to look at that, to look at your art and look at, you know, the other things that you're making with lips and lips? Yes. <laughs> so you can see my artwork at my website, which is lipsticklex.com. Um, so that's lipstick and then lex.com. Or you can find me on Instagram, which is lipsticklexofficial. Um, and you can connect with me there. But um, on my website, you'll see that I have, um, so I, I started as an artist, you know, art for your walls, very traditional, like fine art. Um, but this past, ever since the pandemic, I've kind of been, um, refocusing where I want to take my business and where I want to take my brand. And I've always, I still have such a passion for um, interior design and decor and fashion and pieces that are just fun, wearable art. So this year, I'm really trying to launch into um, introducing, you know, not just art for your walls, but um, home decor pieces and art that you can wear. And so I started making my own line of jackets and shoes and there's a lot more to come this year and I'm really excited about it. Yeah, it's a great, it's, it's, your pieces are amazing. I mean, I was looking at them this morning and I'm like, wow, this is great. Really, Thank you. you know, Thank you. Um, but what, you know, what does lipstick and your signature kisses symbolize to you? Like to me, that's love, it's compassion, but what about yeah. to you? No, I'm so glad that you asked that because um, it's become so much more over the course of the handful of years that I've been doing this. It's become so much more than just trying to be different and doing something that's different and creating in a way that's different. And what I've realized is it's really blossomed into kind of a mission that I believe in so much and that I've always lived my life or try to live my life around, which is all about love. And to me, like, the kiss print is a symbol of love. It's a symbol of affection. It's a symbol of joy and positivity. It's a very positive symbol. And the lipstick component, it's so, it's, it's, it's empowerment, it's self-expression, it's beauty, right? So it's like when you encompass all of these things together and granted, I also use a full color 
spectrum of lipstick. So, you know, anybody that's listening that hasn't seen my work, it's not like all red and pink. Like I have yellow and green and blue. Um, you know, I don't wear those colors out on the street, but I'll make art with it. <laughs> but, you know, so my body of work, it's very joyous. It's very happy. Um, you know, it's supposed to be uplifting and make you feel good when you look at it. And, you know, even my wearable art make you feel good when you wear it. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think it does. I think, you know, yeah. you know like if they go to like your Instagram page or your web page, whatever, it's yeah. like you have to smile. You know, I mean, and Good. there's so much I feel um, spiritually within it. Like, did it open up your spirituality or do you move your spirituality through it? How does that, how does that work? <sighs> Yeah, that's a really good question too. I, you know, it's been interesting, the spiritual component to it, because, you know, to be honest, um, so I grew up, I grew up uh, in a Catholic household, so very, you know, traditional religion. And um, as I grew up, uh, when I was in my early, well, like early, late, pretty much my early 20s, I really started to question a lot of things. And I found that when I would ask questions, I just felt like I wasn't receiving the answers that made sense to me. It just didn't speak true to me. To be honest, Anna, I fell completely out of religion for a good, I'd say a good decade at least. And um, I will still, I will never forget the look on my mom's face the day I told her, mom, I don't believe in God anymore. Like, how can he exist in a world that has all of these crazy things going on? And it just doesn't make sense, you know, kind of p p picking it apart and just not understanding the big picture and not seeing the love, right? It's like, I know this is the way I feel. How could other people do such horrible things to good people? You know, having all these questions. So for a good decade, I kind of, I, I really fell out of it. And what's interesting is along my career, my journey, I would actually have to say that I think I came back into spirituality because of my art journey. And it's interesting how I came back into it because, um, you know, as an artist, there, were, there have been plenty of times where I have been that struggling artist and I've been, you know, trying to figure out, okay, how can I get motivated to create new content? And I've really got to make this thing work because if I can't make it work, then I got to do a nine to five job that I hate. And I remember, um, it was actually shortly after we moved here to Florida, we're in Florida now. Um, and this was in 2017. I really came back into my spirituality. I remember being in my studio. My studio is in a little, little house in our backyard. Um, that I would work out of. And I started listening to, there's like these playlists that you can listen to that I think like bodybuilders listen to where they're like, you did not come this far to only come this far. It was all like grind and go get it, like motivational stuff. So I really got into like this motivational speaker realm. And in that realm, while it wasn't spiritual, when you start listening to that stuff and seeking that kind of um, wisdom and empowerment, I started uh, being introduced to more metaphysical elements, right? And books and podcasts and things like that. And um, at the same time, my husband was sort of on the same journey with me. I think we were both just looking for more out of life, trying to figure out our purpose, trying to figure out answers. And he was actually the first one to read the book. And I'm sure you're familiar with it as, many, as well as many of your listeners. It was the book, um, uh, the law of attraction by Esther and Jerry Hicks. Mm -hmm. And that was like, just like blew my mind. And after that book, it truly was like a portal and open the gateway for so much spiritual content. And what's interesting is that through that, I learned how to have hope, how to believe in myself, how to believe that I am being guided, how to just trust and surrender, how to show up for myself. And through all of this, it really helped me express myself as an artist, but it also helped me manifest things in my art career that I never, ever would have dreamt I could have done. Places around the world that I've gone, you know, interviews that I've had with people. And I truly believe that a lot of it has come from just that belief and, you know, the, the understanding that I have that power within me. And um, so the metaphysical stuff is really what brought me back to spirituality, but in a whole new light that I ever, that I never knew when I was a child, you know, That's and so great to hear like, 
how spirit worked through you, you know, because yeah. it's not always so cut and dry and it's not always about religion, you know, it's about what's inside of you and how you've learned through that, you this journey to connect with inside. And, you know, also as an artist, you know, many artists are old souls, okay? Because you're, you're in touch with your soul and you bring your soul onto paper or canvas or whatever you're doing. And so the universe will bubble that up. You have this wonderful talent, will bubble that up and so that you can express and give and through your art and heal. So um, I love hearing stories like that and especially the manifestation because I always tell people, if you can see it, it can without question be, you know, I'm yes. um, just putting it out there, the power of intention, you know, all of that, it will bring you to where you need to go, you know, yes. and how you need to grow. So um, I love that. And for everybody listening, you know, please daydream, you know, get your yeah. daydreams out there uh, because it can, I mean, it can happen if it can happen for Lexi and it can happen for me. I mean, it can happen for you, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, yeah, struggling artists, all of that, but you found something that can bring it to the forefront. I yeah. mean, I don't know how many other people who are artists work with lipstick. I would not <laughs> very many, um, you know, um, and the way you're doing it, like it's, uh, the pieces are beautiful, you know? Thank beautiful. you. And but I like to believe, but I like to also believe that like, you know, in hindsight, you know, when I fell into lipstick, I don't really know why it popped into my head the day that it popped into my head. You know, in fact, it was funny that it popped into my head when I was, I was on a road trip driving from where we lived at the time, which was in Toronto, Canada, dropped down to Florida, I, you know, not knowing at the time that one day I'd be living in Florida, but you know, this, I just had this eureka moment. And, you know, I like to believe that sometimes when we just let ourselves imagine and let ourselves just surrender to to whatever it is that we are intended for. Like, I believe I was guided to live. Like, if you would have asked me 10 years prior, hey, Lex, one day you're going to be an artist making art with lipstick. I'd be like, what? Like, I don't even, and at the time I didn't even wear lipstick. It's like, why would I make art with lipstick? And so, but I feel like I was guided to create this way because I believe that I'm supposed to do something powerful and impactful through my art and through this medium. And so this is just a journey that I'm just riding the wave and, you know, I still have a lot that I want to achieve. Um, and I just, I'm just in full trust that I'll be taken to where I need to go. <laughs> what do you think you want? What is out there for you? What do you want to achieve? What's like, what are you, what are your goals now? What are your dreams now? Yeah, I really, really want to expand lipstick Lex into a lifestyle brand. I want it to be more than just, like I was saying before, I want it to be more than just art for your walls, but I want it to be, you know, art that you can wear and um, a, 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 I want it to be an aesthetic that you can immerse yourself in that just makes people smile. It makes people feel good. Um, so I'm really trying to expand my art into a big brand and like, hey, I want to have like an end cap at Target one day, you know, and I want to be decorating, you know, high end people's homes. And I just, I want, there's so much that I want. And to be honest, it's, and this is an area, Anna, that like I'm trying to get clear on too, because I feel like my mind has so many different areas that it wants to go. And I confuse myself because there's times where it's like, Lex, you have so many ideas, but like I need to get clear on it. And that's the part that I struggle with um, is having that clarity. And I'm just, I'm, I'm honestly on a journey right now where I'm trying to figure out, you know, what is that thing? Because maybe I'll manifest it faster if I know exactly what that is. Um, okay, but here's the thing. Okay, so here's what I'm feeling. First please, of all, yes. <laughs> always stick with your integrity. You're not a target person, okay? Um, <laughs> Gotta, it, that would be selling yourself short. Okay. 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 Uh, you're, you're so much bigger than that. Mm -hmm. okay? Um, okay. You know, your, your art conveys love. Okay. Don't become too commercial. It won't make you happy. You know, for all the teen, like I have been offered TV shows that would have compromised who I am. Mm. I would rather not and live my life so that I'm honoring my, my gift and I'm able to help people in a way that brings through integrity. You need to do the same thing. 
Okay. Like mm -hmm. you can't go to that space. You won't be happy. You okay. won't be happy. And do you have a daughter? I do. Yeah. yeah. Because I feel like she like mimics you in a lot of ways, you know, yeah, um, she she's going to be a very strong woman. Okay. Um, and so you, you're showing something to her that is saying, this is what's important to life. And that's where your spirituality comes in. You know, mm -hmm. um, how am I, like, like spirit got me to this point. Now, what do I do with it? And you don't always need to know yeah. what's in front of you. You know, um, sometimes you use the word surrender before. Sometimes it's okay. Okay, listen, God, here I am, whatever. I don't know where I'm going, but I know that where I'm going is wonderful and good and I will be taken care of. Yeah. And then just yeah. flow with it. Just like you didn't realize you'd be doing this 10 years ago. Mm -mm. You don't know what you're going to be doing 10 years from now. Yeah. You know, yeah. and look, you've moved into this um, whole metamorphosis thing that you're doing yeah. a retreat what is yeah. that about yeah so that is a whole nother um that's a whole nother baby <laughs> that we're birthing right now um and what it is is it's a retreat that we're creating for our fellow women and um we want to recruit women that are entrepreneurs that are mothers that are trying to figure out their purpose in life and trying to live to their fullest potential and we're basically curating a whole lineup of keynote speakers and experts in their fields, practitioners, um, healers, Reiki healers. Um, we want to be able to give um, women a safe space where they can be with other like-minded individuals, where they can connect and not just with each other, but connect with themselves again and just take a weekend away to just immerse themselves in um, content that is enlightening that's inspiring that's empowering and um, we really just want to just give them an extremely exciting memorable weekend experience where they can just really express themselves and find themselves and go home with new um with new ways that they can implement these things into life to be able to become a better version of themselves, to become to show up better for their kids, to show up better for their jobs, their career, whatever facet that is that they have going on in their life at that time. Um, so we have, um, uh, it's a partnership between me and my girlfriend, Chloe Trotman, who you had interviewed before. Um, and then another one of our girlfriends, Jen Smith, she's a health and wellness and business coach. So we're kind of, um, we're going down the, um, the realm of not just personal development, but business development and spirituality as well. And basically just trying to share what we've learned along our way with other people that are looking for more out of life. And where are you doing this retreat? We're doing it here in the Sarasota area in Florida. So we're going to be doing it out of, um, well, we have a couple different locations, but we'll be in both Sarasota and Bradenton. And will people stay there or will they commute in? They'll stay here. So they'll stay here. So we have a lot of people that are coming that actually live here. Um, and then people that can fly in. Yes, they would fly in. They would stay at a nearby hotel and then, um, we have a venue that they would come to each morning. We'll be providing lunches for them, special dinner, lots of different exercises and activities, meditations, keynote speakers, fireside chats, panels. It's just gonna be a chock full weekend full of awesome content. And where can people find out about this? They can go to the metamorphosisretreat.com um, or they can check out more of our information and learn more, to, more about us on our Instagram, which is the metamorphosis retreat. Well, that sounds wonderful. Yeah. yeah, that sounds really great. I'm sure this is going to be the first of many, you know, things that you do in the future. I'm, I hope that you'll be speaking at it because I think that your story is very inspirational. Thank you. Know, you. I will be. I will be. <laughs> a lot of hope, you know, for, you know, what they, what they, what they can do. Are you putting together a book? I am. Um, a children's book actually yeah because it's really pretty are you doing the illustrations i'm seeing it i'm i'm actually collabing with my nephew who's an artist and he he I, he's inspired by me and um i know a lot of people would expect that i'd be the one doing the illustrations but i sort of want to hand the reins over to another young aspirational artist and let him bring that to life 
Okay. Well, I'm seeing something very colorful and very pretty. Okay. Mm. Okay. So I think I think it will do quite well. Um, I think that you're going deeper and deeper and deeper into your spirituality, and that's what's going to float you through, because you're an artist. You know, I mean, that's what it's about for an artist. You know, yeah. it's yeah. what you feel, and that makes its way onto the canvas, just like a singer. Like when somebody's a really good singer, their emotion comes through it. You know, it's it's the same thing. So. Um, I know you'll do great. I wish thank you, you know. all the best. And thank, thank you. you so much for coming on the show today. Thank and you so much. And to all of you out there, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If so, please like, share, and comment. And be sure to subscribe to our channel so you never miss an episode. Be well. God bless.